ladies and gentlemen, the bumblebees are going extinct. And, you know, this is really a sad, sad thing to happen because it absolutely disrupts the entire food chain from trees that have to be pollinated that bear fruit to virtually everything that you eat that comes out of the ground. These bees are not only great at pollinating, they are great engineers altogether. You know, I would watch them build their nest and their hives and everything. They, they perfectly engineer everything. You know, to see this disrupted, this is a dangerous thing. Because if you lose your pollinating bugs out here, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. And the root to a lot of these problems are the GMO fields. They will attempt to pollinate and they die. And that's the same thing that's happening to many of these flocks of birds that fall out of the sky. They go into those GMO fields to feed and they die. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out in National Geographic. Bumblebees are going extinct in a time of climate chaos. So, bumblebees are among the most important pollinators, are in trouble, fuzzy, buzzy. They excel at spreading pollen and, fertiliz and fertilizing many types of wild florals, as well as agricultural crops, tomatoes, blueberries, and squash. And that is so true. That is so true. And I know what they're saying, y'all, is correct, because when I was growing up, I used to see a lot of bumblebees, and many of them would be around the house where I live because my dad had a garden and they would always be back there in the garden. And we had fruit trees and they would always be all up in the fruit trees pollinating. And when you go out now, if I see a handful of them for the summer season, that's a lot. I really don't see them like I used to. In fact, I don't even see the yellow jackets. I don't see the wasp. I see some, but nowhere near the amount that I used to see as a child. It was a lot of them around. So you can definitely see, even with your naked eye, that things have changed a lot. So they're saying just here in North America alone, you are looking at 50% less of the bumblebees that than when you saw back in 1974. That is true. That is very true. Moreover, several once common species have disappeared from many areas that they were once found, becoming locally extinct in those places. For example, the rusty patch bumblebee, which used to flourish in Ontario, is no longer found in all of Canada. Wow. In the U.S., it's endangered. <sighs> wow. You know, they're going back to climate change. But to be perfectly honest with you, I saw less bees before all of this climate change talk. I mean, because this, this conversation about climate change is pretty recent. Even 10 years ago, I was noticing a lot less bees out here. And a lot of people were not talking about climate change 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You weren't. You hear a lot about it now over the recent years, but I, I didn't hear a lot of people talking about climate change back then. Specifically, scientists found that in areas that have become hotter in the last generation, 
or have experienced more extreme temperature swings, bumblebees are less abundant in Europe. They are 17% less plentiful than they were in the early 20th century. The scientists examined the abundance of 66 species across the two continents. And you know what, that, that might actually be true because look at the temperatures that Europe is reaching every year. They're getting temperatures that Saudi Arabia gets in the summer in Europe. And it was not like that. Even back in the 80s, I was in Europe in the 80s. And it was nothing like that. We didn't get temperatures at 121 degrees, 114 degrees. I never saw temperatures even reach nowhere near that. So, you know, I can see that as being true because even where I am, you know, the Northeast has actually got hotter. A lot hotter than it was years ago. It has long been known that bumblebees are more suited to cold weather with their fuzzy bodies and the ability to generate heat while flying, which often allows them to be the first bees out in the spring. Exactly how vulnerable they are to heat waves and weather fluctuations still isn't clear for most species though the study suggests there's a limit to their adaptability. And I agree with that. And it is indeed warming up. The last five years were the hottest ever recorded in the 139 years that the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has tracked global heat. Very true. You know, I was out yesterday and I noticed even some of the hedges have little bulbs on them. So you can tell we are getting closer and closer to spring and the days are getting longer. A lot of people are noticing that. And, you know, they already said this year we're going to have an early spring. And I believe it. You know, here in the Northeast where I am, you know, I'm not talking about all over, but just in my region, we hardly got any snow. It's been a lot of rain this winter, definitely a lot of rain, but very little snow. And usually when you have a heavy rain season and not that much snow, then the bug population will thrive this spring and summer because it was no real true cold weather to kill them off. Other drivers of decline. Climate change is not the only factor behind the insect's decline. They are also threatened by pesticides. Yes. Okay, so neon nicotinoids, which are extremely toxic, to all bees, destruction of habitat by development and conversion of wildlands into agriculture, the spread of pathogens, and the release of the non-native bees for commercial pollination. Wow. You know, I know in this article, you know, they're talking to a lot of these scientists and everything, but in all honesty, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on on this planet? These folks can't stop this from happening. They can't. They can't. You know, and they're not going to admit their limitations. They want you to believe, oh, yeah, we can do something about climate change. We can do something about global warming. Well, how come you're still babbling about it and nobody's done anything? You know why? Because this is beyond their control, y'all. 
we have seen so many extinction articles now from the birds. I've done the ones on the birds and other insects and animals and there's no stopping this thing. And we saw the die off from the red algae from the, you know, ocean life just dying off by the millions down there in Florida. It got so bad. I believe it was 2018. It was so bad. They couldn't even get in the, the ocean to do any swimming. And I remember my uncle said he was driving along the shoreline and he said it was a big part of the ocean down there that was brown. It had a brown color, which I thought about that. And I said, that's probably a lot of dead animals dead in the ocean. But nobody could even get in there. They, they had signs up all around the beaches in Florida. So this natural die off is beyond anything these scientists can do. It's going to happen. You know, things are changing rapidly on this earth because the earth has been out of sync for centuries now. And it's fighting to get back to normal. And these things have to occur. It's sad. I hate seeing the pollinating uh, insects go because I know how important they are, you know, to the food chain out here. Without them, you're going to have major problems feeding the entire planet. So, and I, I don't like their artificial alternatives like GMOs and all that. That, that stuff is, <laughs> forget it. But, you know, this is why it's important that you try to grow something on your own, even if it's just tomatoes or just lettuce, you know, those things are really easy to grow and you don't need a lot of room to grow those kind of plants and try to lean on these markets less and less. If you don't have that, then try the farmer's market in your area. You know, that's what one of my cousins do. He told me he just bulks up on all types of fruits and vegetables from the farmer's market. And then they just cut everything up and put it in the freezer until they're ready to, you know, ready to use the food. And that might not be a bad idea for those of you that don't have a garden, but that's what they do. They just buy in bulk, big bulks, and just stock up their freezer. And he was telling me it lasts a long time when they do that, you know, when they do that. And he likes it because he gets to have the natural vegetable without any preservatives or anything in it. So... We just going to have to get by the best that we can because at this point, we don't know what the hell is going to happen on this planet. It is just so uncertain now. But y'all, please tell me what you think about these bumblebees. You know, I'm not a big insect lover, but if you grow a garden, you grow to love these insects for what they do. You really do. <laughs> Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.